Welcome back guys. Today, this video is going to be discussing the differences between the Vanguard BND investor shares versus the Vanguard VBT LX Admiral shares. Now, in general, Admiral shares are less expensive, either with lower expense ratios or cheaper price, but they all have a minimum investment amount. In some cases, 3,000 for the index funds, 50,000 for actively managed funds, and 100,000 for certain sector specific funds. Now, both of these funds goal is to produce similar results as the Bloomberg Barclays US aggregate float adjusted index. Now, let's take a quick look at Morningstar. Okay, so here on Morningstar, we have to the left, the VBTLX, Apple share class, and to the right, we have the BND in that investor class. So the Admiral shares minimum investment here is 3000. And for the investor class BND, it's just whatever the open price is, and this fluctuates daily. We see that the total assets are 82.4 billion here and 80, let's see, 82.4 billion over here as well. Now, one of the biggest differences you'll see here is the expense ratio. So the Admiral shares is at 0.05% and the BND fund is at 0.03%. Now, in general, the lower the better because the expense ratio is what the fund managers or it summarizes the percentage of the expenses and fees that are associated with managing this fund. So the higher it is, the more it erodes the growth potential of the fund. Now, if we were to invest $10,000 into, let's say, the Admiral share class, leave it for 10 years with no additional contributions, we expect it to grow to 12,852. Now that's very close to the index, which the funds tries to seek similar results as. And for the investor class, the BND, it's at 12,850. Now these are pretty close. And the index here is 12,856, which is the same because they're tracking the same index. However, they both, you can technically say they underperform their, their index, but it's still pretty close for both of these funds. And as mentioned previously, they're both essentially the same fund. One just has a different investment uh, minimum. So we see that on this little uh, grid box here, which classifies the income style. To the left, we have the uh, investment credit class with low being the lowest, mid being mid the mid range and high being the highest. And to the top, the columns indicate the duration of the maturity of the bonds with mod being between 3.5 to 6 years and it's both the same and we see that the total asset allocation is 96.5 with about 2.58% invested in well just left in cash so we have the same effective duration of 6.8 years in same uh, asset um, exposure so 46.9 for government, 27.59 corporate, securitized, 22.20, cash 2.5. Now, what are the benefits? Um, what are the actual benefits? Do you, you mentioned the benefits that, that Vanguard identified, which is Admiral shares is 35% lower than the standard investor share class. It's 82% lower than the industry, industry average. And they're supposed to be more uh, affordable for everyone by combining low expense ratios. But as we've seen, uh, if you go back to the portfolio page, actually we can see it on the Vanguard's website, the expense ratio is slightly higher for the Admiral shares. Yeah, so 
the investor class is 0.035 and the admiral shares is 0.05. So I guess that's not an absolute um, case, but it just varies per, per fund. Now let's take a look at the perspective and let's see if we can do this side by side. So I'm going to click on the summary perspective. And actually, no, let's do the annual report. So, report. I'm just going to pause this video and then put them both up on the screen. Now, I pulled up the perspective and I went over to the financial highlights and we have the add most shares and to the left we have the ETF shares and we're going to take a look at the total returns. So for 2020 it's 7.72 percent, the BND it's 7.71, 8.71 the same, they lost a little bit more, the BND lost a little bit more, 0 0.01 not much. <laughs> uh, the BND gained a little bit more in 2017 and in 2016, 2.57 versus 2.6. So there isn't very much difference. The, the returns between these two funds are very close. Now we're back on the Vanguard's website and we are gonna look at the returns after taxes on distributions and sales and funds. And we're going to compare it side by side. So we have the total bond market index ADMO shares and the total bond market ETF. So let's see. 10 years, it's, and I'm, I'm going to talk about 10 years because I'm assuming if you're with Vanguard, you're most likely in, in it with for the long haul. So 10 years is 1.72% return and 10 years for the BND is 1.70. It's very close. And since exception in this is been active since 2007, it's 2.63. And since this exception, it's 2.60. Now, those are very long time periods. This is like nearly 20 years. So you can expect a 2.6% return between these two funds if you hold it long term. You know, with the market, it fluctuates yearly. And so it's, if you pull back far enough, you can really see the differences. In this case, the differences are very small. I'm going to end this video here. And if you've been with me this long, thank you guys so much for watching and remember to stay the course.